today's video, we're going to go over the top three failures, most common repairs on the EZ30D Phase 1, EZ30D Phase 2, and EZ36D. Starting at number one on the list is oil leaks. The EZ30D engine, Phase 1 and 2, and 36D are prone to oil leaks. The Boxer engine inherently has a tendency to have more oil leaks, but the, the nature of the EZ series engine compared to the EJs, they have a lot more surface area and a lot more area for oil leaks to occur. The Subaru six-cylinder Boxer engine uses a timing chain rather than a belt like the older EJ series four-cylinder engines. The EJ series engine uses plastic timing belt covers front and rear. The only thing that those covers are there for is to keep water and debris um, from the road and the environment from getting on the belt and contaminating the belt. With the EZ 30D and 36D, the aluminum timing chain cover front and rear has to be sealed and has to hold in the engine oil because the engine oil lubricates the chain. So there's more area, more surface area of these engines that need to be sealed and need to keep oil from leaking. On, on the EJ series four cylinder, you have to worry about the crank seal and the cam seals. Basically, that's the only, only areas on the front of the engine that you have to worry about leaking oil. On the EZ series engines, you have to worry about the entire perimeter of the diamond chain where it seals from the front to the rear cover. You have to worry about the front crank seal. You have to worry about the rear cover, how it seals to the engine block and the cylinder heads. Also on the EZ series engines, the oil pan is a two-piece design, whereas on the EJ four-cylinders, it's a one-piece design. On the EJ series four-cylinder engines, the oil pan is a cast steel piece that bolts directly to the bottom of the short block. On the EZ engines, the oil pan is comprised of two pieces. There's a smaller, lower oil pan that is a stamped steel pan, and then there is an aluminum section between the stamped steel pan and the bottom of the engine block or short block. And this area contains both engine oil and coolant. So instead of like on the EJ series having to worry about the one bead of silicone between the engine block and the oil pan to seal the oil pan, on the EZs you have to worry about the upper pan sealing to the block and then the lower pan sealing to the lower pan. So twice as many areas for oil to leak just in the oil pan. That said, the majority of the oil leaks that happen on the EZ30 engine and EZ36 engine are due to simple maintenance, the PCV valve. Lots of people neglect to change their PCV valves on time or don't even know that their car has it. The PCV valve on the EJ series engine is located on the right engine block half directly above the oil air separator plate just forward of the bell housing. On the EZ series engines, the PCV valve screws into the left hand rocker cover near the rear of the engine. So what does PCV stand for? PCV stands for positive crankcase ventilation. What the PCV valve's job is to help get the built up crankcase pressure out of the crankcase and suck back into the engine and reburned. When your PCV valve is neglected or not replaced on time, oil vapor and carbon deposits build up and shut the valve where it can't open. If the PCV valve can no longer open, it cannot vent the crankcase pressure. As this crankcase pressure builds up, it has to get out somewhere. So it starts pushing out through your oil seals, through cam seals, crank seals, rear main seals, your oil air separator plate, your piston pin access covers, through the time and chain covers on the EZs. The deal is that uh, the crankcase pressure has to find a way out. Even if it's not the path of least resistance, it's going to have to get out of the engine somehow. So that's when you start getting oil leaks that starts blowing all your seals out. Another common area to develop an oil leak on the EZ series engines is between your oil cooler and the engine block. 
your oil cooler has an o-ring seal that seals it to the engine block it's pretty common for this seal to fail and I do have a YouTube video demonstrating the replacement of this seal um, we'll link that in the description below and should have some clips showing uh, this seal and the replacement of it left unchecked this leak can cause a lot of buildup and a lot of oil under your vehicle and make it appear that you have more oil leaks than you actually do so change the uh, if you see a bunch of uh, oil buildup on your oil filter on your oil cooler around the block near the oil cooler or on the coolant lines to the oil cooler most likely it's the o-ring seal at the oil cooler so that's number one on the list the most common issues i see with the ez series engines oil leaks number two on the list is the serpentine belt tensioner the ez series engines unlike the ej series engines use a serpentine belt one belt controls all of your accessory drive and you have one auto tensioner to tension your belt on the ej series engines you normally have two belts one dedicated only to the ac compressor the other to the power steering pump alternator which are not automatic tensioners they are manual tensioners so you well. physically have to adjust the belt tension on these two belts on the ejs not so on the ez's this belt tensioner is spring loaded to automatically tension the belt properly at all times so basically you put your wrench on the uh, bolt head here you turn the tensioner apply pressure to the spring slacks your belt replace your belt put the new belt on let go of the wrench the spring automatically tensions the tensioner to the correct tension for your belt there's actually a little guide on the tensioner that tells you your belt stretch and belt wear with a good belt that has not stretched this pointer should be pointing between these two outer notches on the tensioner if it's pointing out further like this that tells you your belt is stretched to the limit of service and the tensioner can no longer properly tension that belt and it's time to replace that belt the big issue with the auto tensioners are the spring with time wears and it no longer exerts the amount of pressure on the belt that is needed it can also start jumping um, with engine load as the spring weakens it can cause this whole assembly to jump around and rattle and make knocking noises but the other issue is this front pulley the bearings in the pulley located right in here over time just like any other bearing uh, will seize and fail as you can see I can barely turn this pulley by hand it should spin freely like I should be able to turn it with one finger and it spin freely the problem with these bearings are they're a sealed bearing and you cannot service them or grease them or oil them so basically when they're done they're done luckily it's an easy replacement you remove this bolt this washer and the pulley and bearings come off as an assembly you simply replace this put your bolt back in talk to the specification and you're good to go on the other hand if the spring weakens and fails on the tensioner it's basically junk there's no rebuilding the tensioner it's a replacement item so as i stated earlier number two on the list it's a pretty common issue is this auto tensioner for your belt either a weakening spring from age or seizing uh, noisy bearings from age as well so that is number two on our list number three on the list AC compressor there are this basically um, pertains to the easy 30 D phase one so that will be the two 2001 to 2004 model year there are three main failures that occur with the AC compressor normally this compressor does not fail for its refrigerant moving compressing pumping abilities the failure occurs one at the electromagnetic clutch two the sealing of the o-rings that seal the refrigerant lines that go into and out of the compressor and three 
the revolution sensor on the back side of your AC compressor. We'll start at the front with the problems with the electromagnetic clutch on the AC compressor. The problem that occurs on the AC compressor with the EZ30 and also on some of the EJ series engine compressors is that the air gap, which is the amount of free space between the outer rim of the pulley and the back section of the clutch, can get larger over time. As this clutch engages and disengages and engages and disengages many, 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 many times over the years, they can wear each other down, and when you wear each, when they wear each other down, the gap in here between the two gets larger. Just like wearing down the clutch in your transmission, or wearing down the brake pads um, of your car against the brake rotors, the friction wears down these two materials, causes a larger air gap. The problem with this larger air gap as the compressor ages is that this electromagnetic clutch only has so much magnetic force to pull it against this pulley. Once that gap has gotten larger, the amount of electromagnetic pull required to lock the clutch into the pulley needs to increase, but the vehicle is unable to increase the output. So what happens is the AC button is pushed to command the compressor on. The electromagnetic uh, powers up. It tries to pull in and it won't pull in to lock with the pulley. So what happens is you won't get any cold air. Your air conditioning compressor will not engage. To remedy this issue, I have a YouTube video on this specific repair on this specific model. Uh, we will link that in the description below, but basically what you do is remove the center bolt from your clutch. You will thread bolts through the holes here, and as you thread these through, it will pull your clutch off of the front of the compressor. When you get that off inside the hub for the clutch, there's small little spacers, little shims in there. All you need to do is remove one shim and then install the clutch back and measure your air gap. There is a specification in the factory service manual for this air gap and I do include that in the video but basically you just take a set of filler gauges and check for that correct gap. But that's basically all you need to do to correct that issue is to add or remove shims until your air, gra air gap is back within specification. The number two failure with the AC on the EZ 30D engines are the O-rings that seal the AC lines to the compressor. This is not an issue that is only related to the EZ 30 series compressor. This is an issue with uh, across all Subaru models from the 90s to 2000s that over time the O-rings in here would basically lose their seal, they would shrink some, crack, and you would have your refrigerant escape out. And once your refrigerant escapes out, it trips your uh, low pressure switch in your lines and basically keeps the PCM or AC control module or body control module from activating the AC compressor so as not to damage the compressor. So. What you need to do, I have a repair video on this as well. I'll link it in the description. You recover the system if there's any refrigerant left. You take both of these lines loose. You put a new, slightly bigger O-ring in there. Tighten these lines back down. Vacuum your system out. Then recharge and you are good to go. But that's the number two issue with these. But like I said, it's not really specific only to this model. It's basically an issue across the Subaru line. Number three, and this is specific to this compressor and the EZ series engines, is the revolution sensor. This is the revolution sensor. It's mounted on the back of the compressor. What the revolution sensor does is it monitors the RPM in which that the compressor is turning. Well, why do we need to monitor the RPM of the compressor? 
the EJ series compressors do not have a revolution sensor. Well, the difference is the EJ series engine uses one dedicated belt for just the AC compressor. If you ever have an AC compressor failure and the compressor seizes, the belt will be thrown off and you'll still have your other belt to run your alternator and power steering pump to get you back home or get you to the repair shop. With the EZ series engine though, there is only one serpentine belt that spins all of your uh, accessory drives. So, the revolution sensor was mounted to these compressors so that the engine computer and climate control computer could monitor the, R monitor the RPM of this compressor. So, when you command the AC compressor to engage, the vehicle looks and makes sure that when it commands the electromagnetic clutch on that within a second or so, it starts seeing RPM from this sensor that matches the engine speed. That's how the computer knows that this compressor is turning correctly, it doesn't have any issues, and it's not seizing. If the compressor starts acting uh, erratic in its RPM, or this rate at which it's spinning, the computer will disengage the electromagnetic clutch to keep from throwing the belt off due to the compressor seizing. Uh, but a common failure is this sensor to go bad. And once this sensor goes bad, the climate control computer can no longer see the RPM at which the compressor is spinning. If it cannot see if the compressor is spinning or what speed it's spinning, it will not engage the clutch. So you will not have air conditioning. I did film a video on replacing this sensor, but I had issues. This was years ago that I filmed this video and I lost over half of the footage for that repair. Um, I looked recently, I had someone inquire about the part number for this sensor and I cannot remember it offhand and I tried to find it uh, through SubaruParts.com and a few other uh, venues I go through and I could not locate the part number for this sensor but I do know I have bought this sensor by itself from Subaru in the past. It may be discontinued now because I don't think they've used this sensor since 2004, but could be wrong. But, like I said, I've had guys on the forums, the 86 forums and Facebook pages, tell me that uh, their dealer claimed that they could not replace this. They had to replace the entire five dollars $600 compressor. Whether that's now true, I cannot say. I know at the time of uh, filming that video, which I believe was 2004, I bought this sensor from Subaru from the parts counter at my local dealership and replaced the sensor on my 2002 LL Bean. But to conclude, that is the third issue. So number three on the list, AC issues. The clutch, AC uh, O-ring leaks, and your revolution sensor failing.